Good morning. Um, I'm happy to be here in this first day of the morning devotion and uh, to welcome each one of us that we may have a blessed day and a blessed come meeting. I would like to inform you that we will be doing the devotion throughout the week together with my wife, Pastor Edna Amayo. And we have a theme this week for our devotion saying that let God be God. Let God be God. Several situations will be in your life. You will pass through challenges in life. We will go through troubles in life. But God, if you allow him to be God in your life, you will see the hand of the Lord. Our God, when you understand him, you know his position that he is a great God. He is a super being. He is a mighty God. One who is able to do all, you have nothing to fear. Just stand, wait, and see how God will shape things in your life. That is why we are saying, let God be God. Let us have a word of prayer. Precious Lord, we are humbly coming before you this morning. How I pray, Lord, that you may give me the power of the Holy Spirit, that I may be able to speak your word. How I pray, Lord, that you may touch the hearts of your children, that they may understand that, Lord, you are a powerful human, uh, you are a powerful being. Lord, bless us and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I request us to go to the book of Daniel 6. The book of Daniel 6, King Darius chose 120 satraps in charge of 120 provinces and put on top of them three governors who reports directly to him. Then out of them all, Daniel stands out because he was faithful to God. And because of sin, the others are jealous of him and wants to find fault with him. And they say we cannot get any fault with him in any side apart from a relationship with his God. Then they decide to tell the king, we want to make you divine for 30, for 30 days. No one is supposed to worship any other god apart from you, the king. So all the divine allegiance we will give to you and everyone will give to you. Then the king feels very proud. Meaning that these people love me. He accepts it, accepts it very fast. And after accepting, he put his seal that no one will worship any God for 30 days. Let's see verse 11. Daniel 6 verse 11. The Bible says, sorry, verse 10. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home 
and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Something that has caught my attention in that verse is that immediately Daniel knew that a command has been given to worship no any other God. Daniel decides that the best option is to go to my house and kneel down and pray and thank the Lord. You know, in normal situations, he could have rushed to the king and told the king that, do you know, they are looking for me. I am the subject. They want you to kill me. And you know I am your friend. But he did not do that. He knew that there is a powerful power that can be able to help him apart from going to plead with the king. So he decided that let God be God. There are situations that cannot be solved by human beings. Only God can solve situations in life. Then he says, immediately he knew that decree was signed. He went to his house, knelt down, and prayed three times a day. He did not fear he even opened the window because when Solomon's temple was built and was being dedicated, one of the prayers in 1 Kings 8, which we are not reading, one of the prayers was that when your children may sin and they are taken captive to a foreign land and they kneel down facing Jerusalem. Hear their prayer and forgive them. This is why Daniel wants to face Jerusalem, telling God, God of Jerusalem, God who loves his children of Israel, you will not leave me to die. So immediately he knew that Daniel went to his knees to pray to God. Do you know something tells me that he also knew that even the king could not change what he assigned because it was made of Asia. So no need of going to the king. The only help is from the Lord. So immediately he knew that he went and prayed. After praying, then the accusers come and go to accuse him before the king. Then the king, Dilidalis, thinking of how to help Daniel, you can see it, it, it from, verse, from verse 14, Daniel 6, 14. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then those men approached the king and said to the king, You know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and the Persians that no decree or statute which the king established establishes may be changed. They are telling him, we, has, we have told you what Daniel did. But you are wasting your time. Nothing you can change now. You need to be fast in 
letting Daniel down to the lion's den. He struggled, but he could not. Then he, the next verse, verse 16, says, So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, You are God whom you serve continually. He will deliver you. This is the message that I want to give you this morning. That situations will come that no hand of a human being can be able to help you. But you are God whom you serve continually. He will deliver you. In your place of work, there are strifes that will come. No hand of your boss can be able to deliver you. However loving the boss is to you. But you are God whom you serve continually. He will deliver you. In your family problem, it might be so tough, so challenging. It might be that no counselor can be able to solve it. But you are God whom you serve continually. He will deliver you. That is why I like what Daniel did immediately when he heard that the decree has been signed, he went on his knees to pray and to thank the Lord. Some situations are so tough, but Daniel is going on his knees to thank the Lord. He realizes that he is a friend to the king, but the king can do nothing to save him. Only God can be able to save him. Uh, you can see the love between Darius and Daniel by the words that Darius are uh, saying that Daniel, you are going to the den of lions, but you are God whom you serve continually. He will be able to deliver you. I plead with you, I don't know your situation. You know yourself. In all the financial crisis that you are going through, you are God whom you serve continually. He will be able to deliver you. You know some financial crisis, you can't even imagine how to solve them. Some family crisis, you can't Imagine what, what can come out of them. But you are God whom you serve continually will be able to deliver you. You will just find them pass you by. Some health issues in life you may not understand how long they may take. But you are God whom you serve continually. He will be able to deliver you. When you are faced with such calamities, such problems, please surrender to the hand of the Lord. Because God is powerful to deliver you. This I'm saying because imagine that you are seeing a lion here and somebody is telling you that I am delivering you to the lion. And here they were many, not even one. I have been to places where I see uh, lions very close 
And you can be able to see this hand, the front legs, very powerful. You try to imagine if a lion can just step on your, on your, on your, your, your throat. What would happen to you? And just not praying for 30 days, you can just avoid it for 30 days, then you will continue praying. But Daniel is saying, I can't stop praying because there is no one like God. Better I die than to leave my God. Then he decides to go to the lion's den. How many of you would persevere in family problems and wait for the Lord to deliver you? How many of you will survive when there is a deep financial crisis? You are only waiting for what you are not seeing. You are only believing. When he was put in the den, the whole night he was there, the king is really struggling and fasting in the night. You know, sometimes it calls for somebody who is a sinner. Somebody who knew no God to fast and pray. And I try to imagine that this king prayed and asked that God of Daniel, may you save Daniel where he is this night. Then he fasted the whole night. Then he comes in the morning in verse 26. So verse 20. Verse 20. In the morning... It says, and when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? I just feel that this man was having a feeling that his prayer in the night, God must have answered. Then he's saying, I just want to see the evidence that God answers prayers. And you know, this is a worldly king. Believing that there is a God who can answer such powerful prayers. Then Daniel answers in verse 21, then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, so they have not hurt me. We stop it there. My God sent an angel and he shut the lion's mouth, and they did not hurt me. I love when the king was saying, you are God whom you serve continually. He will deliver you. So Daniel is replying and saying, my God came and delivered me. In all those challenges that you are passing through, let God be God. Just trust him, he will deliver you. Give him his position of being God. Risk death. And you will be delivered. That kind of powerful deliverance was done. And then the king was very wroth with the accusers of Daniel. And he made a command that let them all be brought with their wives, with their children. Then all of them were cast inside the den. And the Bible is saying that they were crushed. None of them touched down. Their bones were crushed, all of them. And I think it was a feast for the lions. If they ate only one, they would be missing a lot of food. But because God was saving one, they had a feast. 
And after that, they, the king is seeing that surely it was not because the lions were hungry, were, were not hungry, but it was surely because God delivered Daniel. Because they, they have ate all the many people who have, been who have been cast into the den. They were hungry, but God bounded them. Then he feels an awe and asks himself, what kind of God is this? Then he writes a letter putting his seal on it to all the people that says in verse 26, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. I plead with you, when you remember our God, tremble and fear before him. When challenges come, let God be God. Tremble and fear before him. And then he says, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one we shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. Verse 27, he delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So I just want to plead with you, brethren, that this is an Athen king that the earthly king is telling us that the God of Daniel he is a God who delivers and rescues. God, this God will deliver you and he will rescue you. Where in your life do you feel that it is tough, you can't manage it? God of Daniel, he delivers and he rescues. Let him be God in your life. He will be able to bless you. As choristers are coming that we sing a song and have a prayer, the song will be 439. I am telling you, pleading with you, that wait upon the Lord. In this world, you will go through many tribulations, but be of good cheer. We have overcome the world. Trust him. Believe him. Wait upon him, because the Lord, he is God. May God bless you.